Our first guest played Tracy Morgan's soft-spoken bodyguard on the hit show 30 Rock, and now this gentle giant is making the leap to the big screen. That's right, here to tell us all about his new film, The Cobbler, and his life in the comic book industry is Grizz Chapman. <laughs> Grizz. How are you guys doing? Oh, okay, so your character on 30 Rock, his name was Grizz. Griswold. Warren Grizzle. Griswold. And Warren. your name is Grizz. Yes. So is it, who came first? The character or you? <laughs> I came first. <laughs> I, came, I, first. I, I came to the show with the name of Grizz and then it just ran with it. Really? Yeah. What is Grizz short for? Just Grizz. It's just, just Grizz. Grizz. I, 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 uh, is I got that for like nickname. grind on your Grizzy? Like... Um, well, that, that came from my security days when oh. I was uh, doing security. Uh, and a, uh, a guy that I looked up to, his name was Grizz. So I, I, I got the name from him, and then I've just been Grizz ever since. Oh, been Grizz okay. ever since. See, I thought it because you're like a lovable teddy bear, they call you. They say this. I've heard well, people in, refer in my, to you as that. Uh, in my younger days, I was a lot meaner. You uh, were. Yeah, I was and you were a lot bigger, too. Yeah, a lot bigger. You lost 500 pounds? No, I didn't no, lose 500 you pounds. You were over. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm going to say, wow, that was a lot. Okay. No, I was, okay, I, you I, were I lost over 500 pounds. And, I was over 500 pounds, and I lost, I lost about a buck 60, 160 pounds. That's, How'd you do that? Oh, uh, I cut everything out, you know, mm -hmm. and just my wanting to live. Mm -hmm. You know, I cut out uh, mayonnaise, cheese, you know, all that, all this extra stuff that all we put in the food. Stuff. All the good stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I cut all that out. Well, what motivated you to want that change in your life? Um, I was, uh, I got, um, they had told me that I had uh, hypertension, and then the hypertension mm -hmm. led to kidney disease. Oh, no. So, and they told me if I didn't get it together, I would be on dialysis. And then I was on dialysis. So oh I was on dialysis for, uh, for almost two years, and then I was blessed with a, with a kidney uh, mm. from Ryan Perkins. Ryan Perkins out of Arizona, a young man. He reached out to me and wanted to give me a kidney. Wow. So mm -hmm. you had a kidney transplant? Yeah, in 2010. In 2010. Do you still mm -hmm. stay in touch with Ryan? And Talk to him all the time. You? He's in uh, Coachella right now. Oh, right. Yeah. He's kicking it. Yeah. Yeah. Is he with Justin That's Bieber? Awesome. Hopefully not. <laughs> right, right. No, hopefully not. Right. And I don't think people can get an essence of how tall you are just by seeing you Seven sit foot. down. Can, we, can you stand up for You got to see him like next to me. Lola has on heels, so she cheats. But I feel yeah. like a little kid yeah. next to you. I'm like, really? I'm like, hi, up there. Actually, yeah. this is me without yeah. heels. Let's oh, see how see you really look. Big Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> Had to do that just to give you a that, little bit of glimpse. Yeah, wow! Just so you can see it. I gotta right. take the elevator to get right. up to you. Yeah. <laughs> First and second floor. <laughs> well, let's talk about the cobbler because it's mm -hmm. actually centered around shoes. Yeah. Adam Sandler plays a a cobbler, a cobbler. and mm -hmm. he happens upon a pair of magic shoes. Tell well, us more. The, the shoes are not magic. He mm -hmm. uh, he's inherited a machine that makes the shoes magic. That makes the shoes yes. magic. Oh, I and, need that uh, machine. The, the shoes have to be worked on by this machine, uh -huh. and okay. in order to make the shoes magical. And then he goes on different adventures, you know, playing other people. But okay. um, it turns out to, uh, in the end, you, 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 you find out more about yourself mm. walking through other people's shoes. Mm, well, so we... it, was a, it, was a, it was a really good film. Yeah, really well, we have film. a clip of it, so let's take a look and then discuss. Okay. Hey, boss. Hey. New coat? Yeah. Let's go. Well, how much was that? <laughs> oh, gosh. Looks like we're in store for some shenanigans there, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> so you have to tell us, we saw Method Man, Adam Sandler's in this. What was it like to work with them? Um, well, I, I spent most of my time with Method Man because, yeah. you know, I, I play his, uh, his best -T -H -O -D friend. M-A-T-H-O-D, man. The movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, I grew up on Wu-Tang. Mm. So I, And I was a very, very big fan of his. So it was, it was pretty cool to... To sit with him and, and dig, you know, pick his brain a little bit about, you know, some of the things that I wanted to ask him for years. And what did he you tell know, you? What was the most important question you wanted to ask him? Um, I wanted to know what a woo mammal handle was, because oh. <laughs> in one of the verses, uh, one of the, I think uh, Raekwon says uh, a woo mammal handle, and I always wanted to know what it was. That is what a good is question. It? I got to ask Ray. Oh. You got to ask Ray. Oh, oh man. I think he knew he didn't want to say. Yeah, okay. so you grew up in the projects in Brooklyn. How did you make the leap from the projects in Brooklyn to Hollywood? And um, I, I know you were interested in music. Clearly, you're just talking about yeah. Wu Tang Clan. So, did you ever consider a career in the music industry before um, you took up acting? Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I did a little music, but the, I, I got tired of the babysitting. Mm. You know, you you get an artist, and then you then you got to babysit them, and then a lot of the times, you know, they don't, they don't see what you see, and then. You know, you, you try to say, okay, go this way. You know, they want to go that way. And then the, to them, uh, 
you know, they, they'll, they'll get an offer from somebody else and that offer always looks greener. And then, you know, you know how that goes. Yeah. So you were a manager? Yeah. Okay, manager. Gotcha. And Then, you know, I, I worked the boards a little bit and, and I was always good with beats and listening and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but how I got to Hollywood was a very interesting story. Um, uh, a friend of mine was inspiring to be a wrestler. Okay. So I went, he asked me to go down there to work out with him. So I went down, worked out, and long story short, here I am. I did one uh, Brent Favre commercial. And from there, I just kept pushing, kept pushing, and now I'm here. Yeah, and 30 Rock was a game changer for your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It, was a, it definitely. looked like a fun show to work on. What was the energy like on set and, and to have Tina Fey as your boss? <laughs> um, very intimidating mm. in the first three years because, you know, you just had to, you had to learn who she was. Mm -hmm. But then once I learned who she was, I, I knew that she was constantly in her head writing and not necessarily a mean person or didn't, ignore me you know because you always take it you don't take it personal but you mm -hmm. see somebody you like you want to inside you want to say hi yeah. but you can't really do that you got to be more professional I got you. so but you know once i learned out who she was mm -hmm. i knew most of the time she was writing in her head she yeah. was always thinking about ideas so when she walked past me in the hallway and didn't say nothing it wasn't nothing personal it was just her working you know mm -hmm. let's talk about working with another powerful woman miss jody foster yeah, yeah. Um, she's directed on a new film, mm -hmm. uh, Money Monster. I had a personal meeting with her. She, uh, she liked me, and she put me in the film. Really? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's great. Yeah. <laughs> and The Liar, you're actually, in real life, into comic books, right? Yeah, yeah. And we have gonna... um, My store is called The Lair, and mm -hmm. uh, it's in Mars Park. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I'm actually right now in production of writing about The Lair. Oh. You know, it's about a comic book store in the Bronx. Okay. And we're no. going to keep it in the Bronx to make it a little bit more authentic. All right. I love that. Well, we yeah. can't let you go without talking to you about Tracy Morgan. Mm -hmm. Any okay. word on how he's doing? I haven't spoke to him yet, but, okay. you know, all my love and prayers are still with him. You know, I, I, I know that what he's going through, you know, it's a lot, mm -hmm. you know, being, you know, able to walk again and just feeling better, mm -hmm. you know. And I know, I know he'll reach out to me when he's ready. Yeah. You know, he'll just call me out the blue and start singing on the phone. And, you know, that's what I'm waiting for, Aww. you know. Well, thank you so much for being here, Greg. Yeah, thanks for having thank me. Thank you so much, and good luck. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you in the cobbler. Yeah. Thank you so <laughs> All right. much. And you're watching Rise Entertainment 360.